Okay guys, let's go ahead and do a, an example of our continuous random variables um, but using the normal distribution now. Okay, so here we go. We've got our example. Brooke is interested in marketing and is looking at the price of a new bicycle. She does some research and finds out that it is normally distributed in 1,000 comma 90,000. Answer the following questions. Okay, so first thing that we should do is, well, let's just look at question one. What is the expected value and the standard deviation? So over here, we can put the expected value of our random variable and then the standard deviation of our random variable. And we need to remember that when we get this n parenthesis, it's telling us what we need to know. It's giving us mu comma standard, or sorry, variance. Okay, so the expected value is mu, so that one's easy. It's a thousand dollars. And the standard deviation, well if it gives us the variance, we can say equals the square root of 90,000 and we get $300. Okay, so first one done, nice and fast. What's the expected value and the standard deviation? Easy. Next, what is the probability that a randomly selected bike is between $1,200 and $1,500? Okay, we can do that quickly and easily in uh, in our R commander. But first, let's take a minute and let's actually graph um, this distribution so that we can do some reality checks and make sure that the numbers that our commander are giving us is actually making sense. So let's go to distributions, continuous, normal, let's plot it, and we need just a little bit of information. The first thing it asks for is the mean, and we can say that it's 1000, and the standard deviation is 300. We want to plot the density function, that's going to give us our nice bell curve, and we can give, yeah, x values are underneath, and just so that we've got some shading. Well, let, let's just click OK for right now and we'll, we'll work with this. So I'm going to click OK. And we get our handy dandy distribution plot. Give me just a second. Let's see if I can resize this guy. There we go. Oops. It's moving around now. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. So our normal distribution mean of 1,000, standard deviation of 300. Okay, but we notice that our labels are kind of poor, so let's go back into our code and look. We can change the X label. Instead of it being X, we can do like dollars. Dollars, and then we can do over here, we can do price of new bike. And we can highlight this and just click submit. Alright, so now we've got price of new bike and our dollars are on the bottom. Awesome. So now it says what's the probability that a randomly selected bike is between 1200 and 15? Well if we look we can kind of draw an imaginary line and see that area. Now I, drawing an imaginary line is it's okay but let's actually plot it. We can do it really quickly. Distributions go back and plot it again. This time we're going to go from 1200 to 1500 and let's give it, oh I don't know, let's give it that nice reddish color. And we'll click OK and then I'll click OK here and it filled it right in for us. So now that we see that it's all filled in from our uh, 1200 to our 1500, we can kind of see that we have a proportion of the total area under the curve uh, filled in. And, you know, if I were making a guess, I'd say that this is, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 percent. But the best thing about this is that it gives us some, like a quick reality check to see if the results that we're going to get are within reason. It's always important to do this. Uh, to make a quick graph and to basically make the numbers that are coming out have some like physical meaning to them. Okay, so let's try to actually figure out what this exact probability of being between 12 and 1500. So let's go to distributions again and we can go to the normal and go to our probabilities. 
and we're going to put in our variable values of 1200 and 1500. Doesn't matter if you put the 15 first or the 1200, we just need those two values. We know that the mean is 1000 and we calculated our standard deviation, that's going to be 300. Now I'm going to say the lower tail and if we come over and look at our graph, what that means is that we're going to get the probability from being 1200 and less and then the probability of being 1500 and less. So we get those two areas like 1500 and down and then 1200 and down and if we want the probability of being between those we want to take the probability of being less than 15 minus the probability of being less than um, 1000. So, or sorry, not less than 1000, less than 1200. Okay, so that's called, remember when we go find the probability of the area to the left, uh, that is our lower tail, also known as the CDF, which is our cumulative distribution function. And let's just go ahead and click OK. All right, so we get these two probabilities, and I'm going to take my second one. So that's the probability of being less than $1,500, and then the probability of being less than $1,200. I could equal, and yeah, I was right. It's like just a little over 20%. So I can say for the probability of 1200 being, yes, of our random variable being greater than 1200, but less than 1500. And that would equal, oops, wrong one. Let's copy this guy and paste it over here and we get you know a little over 20 percent okay so let's go to our next question probability that it will cost more than 500 okay let's make another graph real quick distributions plot and we're just going to go from 500 and i'm going to extend this out just to like 2000 technically it just extends out to uh like infinity it goes the normal distribution extends out for forever but just for shading purposes i'm just going to go from 500 uh, to 2000 because i want the probability that it'll cost more than 500 and i'm going to click ok here and look how much it shaded in i'm going to say that this is probably like 90 percent uh, so let's go and do it so let's go to distributions continuous normal normal probabilities and i'm going to click in 500 and right now I'm just going to leave the lower tail and I want to show you what happens. I'm going to click OK and check this out. So it gives me a probability of like four, like almost five percent. And I come down here and look and be like, hey, there's there's something up here because I said that it was supposed to be like 90 percent and it told me that it's supposed to be like five percent. OK, well, let's go back and look at our settings for what we actually did. So what I did is I said, okay, from 500 mean standard deviation, that all looks good, but oh, I clicked lower tail. Remember, the lower tail gives us the probability from a specific point and being less than. And that area, I could believe, is about 5%. So if you want the area to the right, you can click upper tail. Or if you wanted, we could do 1 minus the value that we just got. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. There we go, and yeah, I was close in the ballpark, like 95% uh, percent probability that a bike will cost more than $500. So probability that our random variable is going to be, sorry, greater than 500 is going to be equal to like 95%. Okay, so we're gonna take a break here and we're gonna try to do four in another video and then five and six probably in the last one so this will get you started on the first part of our continuous distributions with specifically a normal distribution good luck you guys